Good day, grade 7 students! It's another wonderful day to learn more. Welcome to our TV lesson for Science 7, Quarter 2, Module 4. I am teacher Jonna Jofafate de Maraporas from Lorenzo Esarmiento Senior National High School, Mawab District. I am very excited to bring you today's lesson about the first level of biological organization, which is the cell. Keep watching because at the end of this lesson, you are expected to differentiate plant and animal cells according to presence or absence of certain organelles. Prepare yourselves as we discover more about the wonderful world of science. Now, get your pen, paper, and your self-learning module. So what are we waiting for? Let's begin learning! Are you the kind of person who asks the whys and hows around you? Do you consider yourself a unique organism? Did you ever wonder what made you a human? If the gadgets you use are made up of small circuits, then what about you? What are you made of? How about animals and plants? Are they made up of the same material as you are? How do they differ? What are their similarities? Today's discussion will help you answer those questions you have in mind. All organisms, from ants to zebras, algae to trees, are basically alike. Their bodies are made up of cells. Located within the cell are minute organelles that have specific functions for the cell to be able to perform various cellular processes including replication and cell division. Living organisms are diverse in form and structure. As you have observed around you, there are various kinds of organisms big and small, tall and short, two-legged and four-legged, and many others. Have you ever wondered what made them the way they are? This lesson will bring you to the world of tiny machines in living organisms, the cells. We have two types of multicellular organisms, and for this lesson, we will enter the cellular level of the animal and plant kingdom. The cell is the smallest basic structural and functional unit of an organism. Trivia time! An adult human was estimated to have at least 70 to 100 trillion cells. There are about 200 types of cell spread in four different types of tissues in the human body. These cells from the structures of the human body and act together to help it function. It is truly amazing that all these trillions of cells came from a single cell and now makes up our body. Isn't it amazing? In the previous lesson, we talked about the parts and functions of a microscope. By the way, if you still haven't watched the previous lesson, you can watch it again at Depth at Davao de Oro TV Escuela YouTube channel to better understand our lesson today. We learned that a microscope enables us to see small things because of its ability to magnify. The first person to observe cells' microscopic structures was the British scientist Robert Hooke. In fact, he was the person who gave cell its name. When Robert Hooke carefully examined a very thin slice of cork, he thought the close-up view resembled small empty rooms. He referred to these tiny rooms as cells from the Latin word cellulae, which means small rooms. A cell is made up of tiny organs called organelles that perform specific functions. They are called organelles because they are like little organs that have its own function. The cell is the basic unit of life. There are two kinds of cell, the plant cell and 
the animal cell. We will be differentiating both types of cells. But for now, let's talk about its parts and functions first. While cells differ in size and shape, most of them have common structures. The cells of animals, plants, and related organisms have three basic structures. The cell membrane, nucleus, and the cytoplasm. The cell membrane, also known as the plasma membrane, encapsulates the contents of the cell. It is like a fence or a gatekeeper that protects the cell from the outside environment. It also controls what materials can go in and out of the cell. The cell membrane is made up of two layers of phospholipids or phospholipid by layer. The nucleus houses deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA for short, which is the hereditary material that carries genetic instructions in all living things. It also houses various proteins and the nucleolus. It is considered as the brain of the cell because it directs all the activities of the cell. The cytoplasm is where all organelles are located and has a jello-like fluid. It is the material between the cell membrane and the nucleus. All right, let's move on to the organelles. The first organelle we're going to discuss is the mitochondrion or mitochondria in plural form. It is one of the largest organelles within a cell. It is also known as the powerhouse of the cell since it is where the energy of the cell, the adenosine triphosphate or ATP, is produced. Next, we have the ribosomes. Ribosomes are tiny organelles like dots that contain ribonucleic acid or RNA and specific proteins within the cytoplasm. Within the cell, ribosomes are directly involved in the manufacture of proteins. Another organelle is the endoplasmic reticulum or ER for short. There are two types of ER, the smooth ER and the rough ER. The smooth ER is named so because it lacks ribosome surface. However, the rough ER is the opposite. Since the rough ER has ribosomes, it is involved in the manufacture of proteins in the cell. The rough ER also helps in transportation of proteins. On the other hand, the smooth ER is involved in the synthesis of lipids like phospholipids which are used to build the cell membrane. Other functions of the smooth ER include metabolism of carbohydrates, enzyme production in the liver, and contraction of muscle cells in the muscles. Another organelle is the Golgi apparatus. It is responsible for transporting, modifying, and packaging proteins and lipids into vesicles for delivery to targeted destinations. It is located in the cytoplasm next to the endoplasmic reticulum and near the cell nucleus. While many types of cells contain only one or several Golgi apparatus, plant cells can contain hundreds. Did you know that cells also produce waste? In the cytoplasm, structures called lysosomes contain chemicals that digest waste and burn out or damage cell parts. Lysosomes act as the waste disposal system of the cell by digesting absolute or unused materials in the cytoplasm. Thus, lysosomes are also called as suicidal bags of the cell. Lastly, we have the vacuole. A vacuole may be described as a space inside the cell that does not contain cytoplasm. It is surrounded by a membrane and filled with fluid. Vacuoles store various molecules including enzymes, waste product of the cell, water, and even food material depending on what type of cell. 
both plant and animal cells contain membrane-bound organelles like the nucleus and mitochondria. However, plant cells and animal cells do not look exactly the same or have all the same organelles, since each of them have different needs. So how are plant and animal cells similar or different? Why do plant and animal cells have differences? Plant and animal cells differ because they have to perform different functions. Both animal and plant cells have mitochondria, but only plant cells have chloroplast. Plants don't get their sugar from eating food, so they need to make sugar with the help of the sunlight. This process known as photosynthesis takes place in the chloroplast. Once the sugar is made, it is then broken down by the mitochondria to make energy for the cell. Because animals get sugar from the food they eat, they do not need chloroplast, just mitochondria. Both plant and animal cells have vacuoles. A plant cell contains a large singular vacuole that is used for storage and maintaining the shape of the cell. In contrast, animal cells have many smaller vacuoles. Both plant and animal cells have a cell membrane, but only plant cells have a cell wall. In plant cells, the cell wall surrounds the cell membrane. This gives the plant cell its box-like shape. This also allows plants to remain strong and stand upright even if they grow to great height. Lysosomes are found nearly every animal cell. They are common in animal cells because when animal cells take in or absorb food, they need the enzyme found in lysosomes to digest and use food for energy. On the other hand, lysosomes are not commonly found in plant cells. Lysosomes are not needed in plant cells because they have cell walls that are tough enough to keep large or other substances that lysosomes could usually digest out of the cell. Lastly, we have the centrosome. The centrosome is a microtubule organizing center found near the nuclei of animal cells. It contains a pair of centrioles. Two structures that lie perpendicular to each other. The centrosome replicates itself before a cell divides, and the centrioles appear to have some role in pulling the duplicated chromosomes to opposite ends of the dividing cell. However, the exact function of the centrioles in cell division isn't clear because cells that have had the centrosome removed can still divide. And plant cells which lack centrosomes are capable of cell division. All right, as a recap, here are all the organelles we talked about. The three basic components of the cell are the cell membrane, nucleus, and cytoplasm. Within the cytoplasm are the organelles, which are the mitochondria, ribosomes, smooth and rough endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, lysosomes, and not seen in the illustration of the animal cell is the vacuole. Those are the basic organelles of the cell. Now, here is the table comparing the structures found in the plant and animal cells. Plant cells have a large, singular vacuum, while animal cells have many smaller vacuoles. Plant cells have chloroplast and cell wall, while animal cells don't. Lysosomes are rarely present in plant cells, but are present in almost every animal cells. And lastly, animal cells have a centrosome, while plant cells do not. 
To test your understanding about our topic for today, let's try this simple activity. Directions Arrange the scrambled letters that correspond to an organelle located in plant and animal cell in column A. Match the organelle with its appropriate function in column B. Write your answer on a separate sheet of paper. So how do you find the activity? Well done! I hope you learned and enjoyed the lesson. Stay safe and always be cautious. See you all next time. Once again, I am Teacher Jonet Joffa Faith Dimer Paras from Lorenzo S. Sarmiento Senior National High School saying, Dito sa TV Escuela, sa pag-aaral, sama-sama. Bye-bye!